This is the CSBR, a biological process for wastewater treatment with constant level and continuous flow in effluent that belongs to Rothwell. The CSBR is an advanced biological wastewater treatment process which combines both the advantages of the continuous inflow type SBR systems and the conventional advanced activated sludge treatment processes. It is a process of highly increased nitrogen and phosphorus removal that has proven to be economical and efficient. This system is composed of an A2O process with three cells, anoxic, anaerobic, anaerobic with continuous flow, together with two symmetrical arranged SBR cells. There is an ARS chamber located between the two SBR cells for the return of activated sludge. While one of the SBR cells functions as a settling cell to discharge treated water, the other SBR cell plays the role of a reactor by supplying air. The influent distribution system consists of an influent channel and a distribution weir. After sewage flows through the channel, it is split into the anoxic and anaerobic cells. The CSBR process consists of equipment like air supply system, decanter, sludge wasting system, mixer, return, baffle, and scum removal system. The air supply system feeds air through diffusers, which are installed at the bottom of the cell to remove organic matter, nitrogen, and phosphorus. The oxygen concentration in the cell is automatically adjusted by alternating the operation of the DO meter and motor-operated valve. The decanting system is a fixed discharge device which adjusts the discharge of the treated water by using air pressure. It consists of a hood and a valve to control the air discharge. During normal operation, the discharge of the treated water is blocked by the hydraulic structure of the decanter. When it is time to discharge the treated water, the air valve opens to discharge the air in the hood. This naturally discharges the treated water due to the water level difference. The sludge wasting system uniformly draws the excess sludge with high concentration through pipes, which are arranged at the bottom of the SBR cell, and then the excess sludge pump drives them to the dewatering system or returns them to the anoxic cell. The mixing system is installed in the anoxic and anaerobic cells, which uniformly mixes the sludge that did not settle in the cells. The sludge return system consists of a return valve to control the return from the SBR cell to the RIS chamber and the return pump to transfer the return sludge to the anoxic cell. For the stable discharge of treated water from the SBR cells, baffles are installed at the bottom of the SBR cells and attached to the decanter cell based on the calculations of the hydraulic simulation. The scums and bubbles that were created in each cell during the operation will finally end up in the SBR cells due to the gravity flow. Before the return process begins, the operating pump drains the RIS chamber to lower the water level. Next, the valve opens and the return process starts. The return water flows like a waterfall, ramming hard against the RAS chamber, in which the scum is broken.
the process in each cell will be explained now. The raw sewage that contains microorganisms for the microbial growth in the bioreactor is split into the anoxic and anaerobic cells after the pretreatment process of grit chamber screen. In the anoxic cell, sewage is mixed with return activated sludge from the SPR cell, and the nitrogen oxides contained in the return sludge are treated. In the anaerobic cell, microorganisms release phosphorus from their body in the anaerobic condition, and then sewage flows to the aerobic cell. In the aerobic cell, as the required amount of air is continuously supplied through the uniformly arranged diffusers at the bottom of the cell, the removal of organic matter and nitrification, and also the luxury uptake of released phosphorus from anaerobic cell take place. The treated water after the aerobic cell flows to the SBR cells. Both SBR cells repeat alternately the discharge of treated water and reaction processes for two hours per cycle. After the solid liquid separation is over in the SBR cell, the supernatant is discharged by the decanting system and the settled excess sludge at the bottom of the cell is driven to the sludge treatment process at the desired time. At the same time, the other SBR cell proceeds with the reaction process. The reaction process of the SBR cell consists of four stages, namely, anoxic in return, aerobic in return, aerobic and non-return, and pre-settling. The anoxic in return stage is a process where the precipitated sludge rises and mixes completely by supplying air temporarily. Next, the return valve opens and the mixed sludge flows into the RIS chamber. Then, the mixed sludge is sent to the anoxic cell by the return pump. At the aerobic and return stage, the cell turns into the aerobic conditions by supplying air inside, treating some additional organic matter and nitrogen that have not yet been removed, while the sludge continues to the chamber of return activated sludge. Next, at the aerobic and non-return stage, the return process is stopped by closing the return valve and stopping the pump. The aeration condition continues by supplying air continuously. After the aerobic and non-return stage, the next step is a pre-settling, in which the solid liquid separation occurs within a short period of time in a static settling state, where the SBR cell is in off mode. Let's see the whole process of the CSBR. The A2O process of the anoxic, anaerobic, and aerobic cells operate 24 hours. Two SBR cells alternately operate the discharge of treated water and reaction process for two hours per cycle. A PLC program automatically operates all the process. The operator is able to operate with the optimum condition suitable for the characteristics of the plant by adjusting the operating conditions depending on the situation by checking the operation status through the monitor of the control room. The CSBR process is composed of anoxic, anaerobic, and aerobic cells, which are clustered as a single structure with clarifiers. Each cell has its own function. Therefore, it can ensure the stable water quality and meet strict water quality standards without requiring a separated secondary clarifier. In addition, it is possible to adjust the layout arrangement, space, and depth of the structure according to the site condition by keeping the same depth in all cells, including the SBR cells. The compact installation is possible in a small area which can minimize the operation movement and also make the construction costs very economical and stable. Some of the experiences of the CSBR process are as follows. Wonnung WWTP Wastewater Treatment Plant has a capacity of 80,000 tons per day. Jingan WWTP 
has a capacity of 80,000 tons per day. Jeonju WWTP has a capacity of 100,000 tons per day. Tukje WWTP has a capacity of 30,000 tons per day. The latest trend is that wastewater treatment plants are constructed underground, while parks, sports facilities, etc. are eco-friendly built on the upper space for residents. For example, Pakdar Wastewater Treatment Plant, with a capacity of 250,000 tons per day, was built underground, and also many other wastewater treatment plants which are in operation. Pyore WWTP has a capacity of 27,000 tons per day. In Jingan WWTP, the first plant has a capacity of 80,000 tons per day, and the second plant has a capacity of 20,000 tons per day. Samsung WWTP has a capacity of 16,000 tons per day. Minrak WWTP has a capacity of 16,000 tons per day. Daegu Techno Police Industrial WWTP with a capacity of 4.5 thousand tons per day. It is installed underground and in normal operation. The CSBR adjusts the anoxic and aerobic reaction time of the CSBR cells according to the conditions of influent water quality and controls the split of influent flow rate into the anoxic and anaerobic cell as a result of this, the CSBR ensures a stable treatment quality in optimal operation conditions. The CSBR process is a proven efficient and economical wastewater treatment technology with a record in a large number of wastewater treatment plants up until now since it was introduced in developed countries such as United States and Canada since 1995. Rothwell always commits to provide the best solutions from the customer's point of view. This is the latest trend of cutting-edge wastewater treatment technologies, thanks to years of research and innovation to offer the highest standards of environmental protection. That's what drives Rothwell.